messages from uh, some of our organizations affiliated to UFTI, that's what Federation for Democratic Youth, and uh, after that um, we also have a number of entertainment uh, artists that we have, we've got Kilati, we also have Ilyasa, so our foreign dignitaries, you get an opportunity to uh, find uh, the Zimbabwean entertainment platform. Uh, done by the youth themselves. Um, and also day number two, uh, day number three rather, which is tomorrow, day number one was arrival, day number two is today, where we have uh, the majority of the program. Um, on day number three, that's tomorrow, we are also going to have lectures, and uh, these lectures, uh, some of the topics there include African brief history, we also have uh, topic number two, African liberation movements, and uh, we also go into the uh, African economic updates. Uh, I think those uh, who have uh, watched the most international news would come to realize that uh, the economic agenda is at the core of young people. Then we also have African youth empowerment, youth economic empowerment. Then we also have topic number five, that's education, science, and innovation in Africa. I would like uh, at this moment in time to ask our Deputy Secretary for Youth Affairs, Comrade Louis Matutu, to come up and introduce our Secretary for Youth Affairs so that he can give us his uh, welcome remarks. Uh, Comrade Pinkrat, the Deputy of the Central Committee. He, okay, first, he, uh, <coughs> uh, he's a member of Parliament from Butu South. He is a member of Central Committee, he is a member of the Political Bureau, and he is also the newly uh, elected Chief Whip in our Parliament. <laughs> it's just a sign that our leadership believes in young people. They believe in those that lead young people, and they believe that young people can do something out of what is uh, in our actual disposal. And we'd like to thank our leadership because of that. Come and provide to the My request to that you will come and address us. Thank you. Viva Zanubiev. Viva. EGP. 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 This program was supposed to have only the national executive of the Youth League uh, discussing with our delegates from WIFD on issues that we would want to put forward and discuss worldwide economic, social, political issues that affect daily lives of the youth. But the leadership of the Youth League then said it would be very important to have our youth in Zimbabwe in their diversity come to this meeting at the official opening to interact with youth from all over the world so that we can learn from them. We can also uh, advise them on issues that are affecting youth in Zimbabwe and maybe create contacts. One day we want to go to Russia, one day we want to go to Burundi, DRC, and many other countries that are here. We start our friendship here because all of us here, Zimbabwean youth and those youth from other countries, are the future of this world. So you need to know each other and interact for the good of this world. Comrade National Chairman, uh, we recognize uh, the duty that we were given by WIFT and the trust that was given us 
as a people, as the a youth league of Zanubiev, to host these people uh, in our uh, in our in our in our country. It's it's an opportunity that we expect, and we also want to respect them for entrusting such a, an important organisation, entrusting it to Zanubiev Youth League and the, the trust that we would do it, and do it well. So it is your leadership, the leadership of Comrade Idim Nangagwa, that gave confidence to well to feel it's important to converge in Zimbabwe, and discuss not only African issues, but world issues. So the youth who are here, you should be very proud of yourself. The meeting that we are in is not just an ordinary meeting. We are going to be discussing world issues. Issues that affect the youth, issues that affect economies, issues that affect politics of this world. So this is an opportunity for us to give our own inputs to ensure that the world we live in is conducive and favorable to the interest of young people. It is my pleasure to request our second in command, Comrade El Matutu, to come up and introduce our Vice President for WIFT to give his remarks. Comrade Matutu. Thank you, Comrade Tsongi Swanda, our Master of Ceremonies. Uh, Honorable Chairman of uh, ZANPEF, uh, Mamam Chinguri Kashiri. May I? <laughs> May I take this opportunity to introduce our colleague from Africa representing our continent, our African continent. This colleague uh, takes direction is indeed the son uh, who has been nurtured by Swapo Party from Namibia. And the colleague has been in the revolution, uh, the youth revolution for quite some time. He is with here with other colleagues from Namibia, but is here because he's the vice president of UFTI. We have got in the structures of UFTI a president coming from Cyprus, two vice presidents, one from Asia and one from Africa. So he is representing us as African youth in UFTI as an organization. He is amongst some of us who view Africa as a continent of prosperity, a continent that loves our people. But it is that when he presents here to us to understand and see through ourselves to say, when we look at our continent, what do we see? Just like what Professor Lumumba said of Kenya, he said, when I look at Africa, I see a bright future for young people. When I look at Africa, I see a united people. When I look at Africa, I see a people with a history. When I look at Africa, I see a continent, a people rich with resources, rich with intellectual property, and indeed rich with love amongst themselves. The Vice President of Food, Ufti, may I therefore call upon you, Comrade Naftal, to address us. Thank you. Honorable and Comrade and Mother, Opa Musimburi. National Chairperson, National Chairperson of ZANU PF, Minister of Defense of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Member of the Central Committee and of the Politburo of ZANU PF, Comrade P. Tongarebi, Secretary for Youth Affairs of ZANU PF, and my brother and Chief. Was long and bitter. We were not there, but our elders were there. 
It was long and bitter. Yet we are not, for any reason, even to the point of a God, betraying the long and bitter struggle. We must continue to keep unity within the former liberation movement in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to go ahead of myself without taking this opportunity to congratulate President Emerson Munangapa. I said President Emerson Munangapa. For winning the election, for winning the election, for defeating the opposition. I said for defeating the opposition. Do I have some revolutionaries in the house? Again, when Zambia win, we are there to celebrate. Comrades, UFTI is the largest youth federation in the world. Very radical, speaking on issues. Speaking on issues. Issues of Western uh, Morocco illegally occupying the territory of Western Sahara. Speaking on issues of Morocco built a wall and planted seven million landmines to kill the people, to kill the innocent people of Western Sahara. Those are the issues. Those are the issues. Serious issues. Serious issues of America putting military bases in Africa. Those are the issues. We are not here for minor issues. Minor issues we can solve, but we want to speak to serious issues. Issues of the International Court of Justice used by the imperialists to, 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 to unfairly judge our leaders. Those are the issues. Those are the issues. I was listening attentively to the presentations, very powerful indeed. Comrades, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Commander in Chief of the Zimbabwean <coughs> Defense Forces extends his greetings to all of you and wishes you a successful meeting. <laughs> Director of Ceremonies, Comrades Bongine Sibanda. Secretary for Youth in the ZANU-PF Politburo, Honorable Togarepi, Vice President of the World Federation for Democratic Youth in charge of African region, Comrade Kambungo, foreign delegates here present from within the continent and beyond, ZANU PF Youth League executive members, distinguished guests, Comrades and friends, it gives me great pleasure to be part of this grand occasion, marking the official opening 
of the session of the World Federation for the Democratic Youth Africa Regional Commission Youth Summit 2018. I'm informed that you have gathered here from 23 African countries and 10 outside the continent. I extend my hearty welcome to you all and wish you a pleasant stay in Zimbabwe. In line with the African Union Agenda 2063, I'm confident that this summit will broaden your thinking and perceptives towards the realization of a united and empowered youth. It is thus important that you leverage on the peace dividend, the natural resource endowments on the continent, as well as the envisaged integrated trade and investment synergies driven by its own citizens who represent a dynamic force. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as youths, you have a fundamental role in the development course of all our economies in Africa and indeed in the entire world. I therefore exhort you to play the frontline role of defending Africa's territorial integrity as well as developing indigenous knowledge systems. You must be active players in the modernization and industrialization agenda of Africa through research, innovation, and enterprise development. I therefore challenge you to always be at the forefront in searching for winning formulas, strategies, and technological innovations to value aid and beneficiate our abundant natural endowments. In line with the African Youth Charter, which aims to strengthen, reinforce, and consolidate efforts to empower young people through meaningful participation and equal partnership in driving Africa's development agenda, I urge you to aggressively search for strategic business partnerships to explore and exploit the various trade and investment opportunities in Africa. We have a key role to play in global development and Africa cannot be ignored in the new economic world order. It is now time for you, our youths, to make your own history and be heroes in the new global economic epoch. To this end, I urge this summit to come up with comprehensive recommendations in the interest of the youth for communication to various multilateral institutions. And as a listening president, my administration will continue to foster youth development and inclusivity in our spheres of leadership and governance, as we witnessed in cabinet and also parliament. In conclusion, I commend the leadership of the World Federation for Democratic Youths and the Zano PF Youth League for organizing this auspicious gathering and all stakeholders who have contributed towards the success of this event. Resolutions of this summit should enjoin us as leaders of the continent to continue to promote and prioritize youth issues. This will assist us to outline necessary policy interventions which are meant to deliberately create an enabling environment and opportunities to improve the quality of life of the young people. With these remarks, I wish you all fruitful deliberations God bless you all. Long live our youth. Long live our future. I thank you.
appreciate many, like I said, the countries, like the communist countries, who actually saw it as a necessity for Africa to be decolonized. But then we cannot be taking a blind eye because all those who assisted Africa to be decolonized, they had their other interests in Africa as well. Let me take a point in, uh, case in point. Um, it's good that most of us here, we are coming from the different various countries in Africa, but me, I'm coming from Swaziland. Uh, so when you talk about freedom, democracy, and all the like, it's pouring to the general Swaziland people. So Swaziland has never experienced it, what we call democracy. When the white men left in 1960, they drafted the constitution for the Swazi people, which started to work in 1964, whereby they said they will only live, because we must understand that there were two reasons why uh, colonialists left Africa. The first one is that they were forced by the liberation movement, or the, the people's power that was calling for liberation. Another one is that in the first place, Africa was colonized for economic reasons, which means it was an imperialist agenda to colonize Africa. So they understood that now it was no longer that much profitable for them to be in Africa, this car. So it was easy that they control Africa while they are also in Europe. So in the case of Swaziland, the last one is true, whereby the whites, they understood that it's no longer profitable to be in Swaziland. So the only way now we have to give the Swazis some kind of uh, fake independence so that they can be always loyal to the, to the colonialists. That's why we're talking about Commonwealth where most of our countries, they are affiliated. And it doesn't make sense now why do we always want to be affiliated to people who are colonizing us. I think as young people, uh, as young leaders, we must interrogate that fact. Why do we want to associate with the people who were in the first place our forefathers regarded as the, our, our enemies. But now we are, we are even subscribing, taking our own resources, subscribing to our own enemies. So, I totally agree with my brother's example of a car. And I would like to say that the car belongs to the black offspring <coughs> of the person whose land was stolen from. The white man can talk of improvement on the land because he put on a wall, he put on irrigation pipes, but my science will tell me that that soil is not as fertile as it was 100 years ago. So what improvements are we talking about? What conversation are we talking about? The white man's conversation is on the profits that he made for the past 100 years on the stolen land. Homeless let's not be soft when dealing with this issue of land. We need to be very vigilant. The person we are dealing with here is a person with hundreds and hundreds of years of experience in oppression. A well-oiled and well-financed person. So what's the point of reasoning with such a well-financed Mais 
il est question de nous tous aujourd'hui, sans la haine, sans division, que nous mettons tous dans une même colonne, vous de là-bas, nous d'ici, de l'autre côté, et que nous mettons tous pour un combat commun. Je ne sais pas si je dis, je ne sais pas si Mas há uma questão similar que temos que assumir que é verdadeira. É que é a questão da origem do colonialismo. A contínua colonização de África. Agora aqui há museus. Havia um ministério que estava a dizer o camarada da sua Zelândia que era presencial. E há esta hoje. Where are we going to get this freedom, this independence? 
of economy. We have the land, but we seem not to know, and we seem not to be interested to use our land properly. Yes, they say fortune favors the bold. This is uh, for me to speak about this. It, it, it's a very fortunate and bold thing. Comrades, we are saying we are taking our land back good. I'm happy. I also want land. I, I will, if we have to take it by gun, I will be the first even to take a gun. <laughs> now, now. I, I'm, I, I'm not joking. I'm serious. Yeah. But the strategic, systematic, what are we going to do with when we take off over land? Namibia, we have a willing buyer, willing seller system of land. We have given a lot of people land. Let me talk about farmland. They are resettled. The person is farming with uh, five goat, two cattle. Ten years of being resettled on the land. Comrades, our true comrades in the East and the West are Cuba and Russia, for me. Maybe in my own personal capacity and not the Swapo party. Because look, Rus uh, Russia helped us. What does Russia ask from Africa? Nothing. Cuba has helped us. What does Cuba ask from Africa? Nothing. China has helped us, yes. But why does China want a lot from Africa? Comrade, this is very important. You see, this thing that we are doing here, Julius Nyerere did not do this thing. Nelson Mandela did not do this thing. And other great African leaders, they did not do what we are doing here. This thing of coming here, wah, 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 rhetoric, wah, 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 rhetoric with no action. They decided, they took action. What are we doing? We are going to wait for another regional summit to come here. Wah, 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 wah. No action. We are cowards. We are a generation of cowards. We are a generation that could uh, 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 summarize it very clear. Hey, how twerk? How you speak English? Hey, 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 hey. And that's it. <laughs> when we live here, we are going to go back to our own corners. Our own countries, our own offices with nice uh, air conditioning and all of that. And do nothing. Resolutions that we are going to take here, where are we going to take them? We are going to put them in these nice beautiful bags, leave them in our car boots, in our offices and that's it. We will remember them when there is another regional summit. That is the only problem that is killing us. When the Berlin conference took a decision to invade Africa, it was not only a decision, but there was an action. And they came to Africa. And they took over Africa. Now, if you want to claim back Africa, we are not going to claim back by making rhetoric slogan, Amanda, away to Viva, no. We are not going to take back Africa. I am calling upon you, comrades. Those who are with me in China, they will tell you. I told you that summit. It is of no use to call us to China, fourth Africa youth, what, 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 what. But there's no report of what happened on the third Africa summit. African economic updates. Let me confess, this is not a easy task. African economic update is a broad topic. Therefore, <coughs> this presentation will not be exhaustive. According to Wikipedia.org, the economy of Africa can be summarized by the following statistics. Uh, for the year 2017. <laughs> Africa has fitted five states. It has a population size of 1.2 billion. It has a combined gross domestic product, what we call national output, that is produced in the whole of Africa of $3.52 trillion. In 2017, Africa experienced a gross domestic product growth rate of 3.7%. It has got a GDP per capita of 2,820 US dollars. We cannot delink ourselves 
from the world. We have to relate somehow. Yes, the land issue is an emotive issue. We have done it in Zimbabwe. We have learned our mistakes, but we are on our way out. We are in control. On everything that we do, we can say in Zimbabwe we are in control. <clears throat> but what is the attack? The attack on Zimbabwe has been to make sure that they put fear in Africa, that you don't touch land. If you touch land, we are going to punish you severely as we did Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe has become an example. So South Africa, you find they are now trying to do it, but you find there are certain quarters, the country is divided. Some are saying don't touch it, some are saying let's go for it. But the circumstances in terms of Zimbabwe and South Africa are a little bit different. South Africa has no abundant agricultural land as we have in Zimbabwe. South Africa's economy is not based on agriculture. It is based on industry and services. Ours is agro-based. So when we were hit, it became an issue. So I'm just trying to link your topics to say, when you look at the liberation movements, we were talking about the African brief history. Now we're talking about the narratives of understanding the economic jargon, I know it's not a very interesting area because it is highly technical, but it just gives you an understanding of our condition. If you're selling your raw materials and then you're buying them back at a higher price, it's never going to work. So I'm, I'm just wondering why we are so slow in developing that area because that is the core area actually. If, we look, if we're looking at it um, in terms of summarizing what's actually ha happening globally, that is actually the core thing that is keeping us under economically. So we need to focus on that core issue of our raw materials, how we can actually get them, refine them and keep the funds within Africa. Because when we are doing that, we're not relying on first world countries to set laws for us, to say, no, you can't borrow money and you can't do this and you can't do that because we're actually making the money on our own. So I think that we need to focus more on how we can move forward in that direction. And we, are, we need to, like as youth, why can't we actually get the funding to be able to put up structures of that nature? It's very difficult. Like we are here, we are, we are brainstorming, but then you know, to actually go and implement such structures, it takes so much and the funding is just not available for us and we don't know why or how we can make that better for us as youth to be able to have access to the funding to do the right thing for our, our nations. As African young leaders, it is prudent for us, uh, as we meet in such a, a summit, to come up with a resolution that if we want Africa to prosper, if we want Africa to be economically independent, we need to have a common currency. It is very important. How are we going to do it? We are the drivers. We should be the initiators. Then we can take it up. Like we agreed, uh, most of the comrades have been submitting that it is important that whatever we resolve here, it has to go somewhere. We need to take it up, we need to up the game. So I think it's important. Um, but in Africa, there is an abertura enorme of negócios with economies stable, and ambientes and negócios We have a uma força de trabalho jovem e aumentar e que se perspectiva cada vez mais global. E a urbanização e o aumento de classes médias africanas estão a abrir novos mercados, o que funciona como um imã para os investidores ocidentais e orientais. Muitos países africanos, neste momento, não têm outra escolha se não endividar-se nos mercados financeiros internacionais, devido à urgência do desenvolvimento e a redução do financiamento concessionário. Nos últimos anos, o financiamento concessionário, que é o crédito no âmbito da ajuda ao desenvolvimento, A 
again, we are just here in Harare. We have come for the regional uh, summit for the young people of Africa in Ufdi. And uh, we have deliberated on many issues. First of all, uh, we had the official opening by His Excellency. The President has delegated the, the Minister of Defense to come and do it on his behalf. We have learned a lot of things uh, from his speech. And uh, part of what he has spoken, we have also carried out to the executive. So, however, comrade, the message is very clear, but now you must know that we are radicalizing the African youth because the radicals are the ones that are changing the world. Africa, in its current state, is under economic occupation. So we are radicalizing the young people to speak on issues, to speak on issues of uh, mining, occupation by the Western countries, and suggest even if possible, the nationalization of mines in different countries so that we have the resources of Africa owned by African government, owned by African people. And youth empowerment, youth empowerment, we want our youth to be empowered. We want the youth to be given at least a 40% quota in every sector of the economy, in every country where we operate from. That is the way forward. We want youth empowerment. We want the reclaiming of the African resources from the Western uh, so-called uh, multinational companies. We have called to an end of multinational companies in Africa, African mines, African fishing uh, companies must be there to execute this. And in my last word, we have issued a strong statement. You will uh, get hold of it. We are calling for the radical youth of Africa. So the young lions of Africa have risen. I thank you. Long live Wufdi, long live ZANU-PF, long live all the African youth organizations. Thank you. Aluta continua. Victoria is served. Merci, uh, chers amis. Uh, chers amis jeunes africains, chers, chers amis jeunes du monde. Aujourd'hui, uh, La Fédération mondiale a tenu sa réunion sur le thème l'unité et le développement des jeunes africains. Cette réunion qui a duré pendant trois jours, les jeunes ont travaillé pendant trois jours sur les, sur les questions de fond. Euh, C'était un honneur pour la jeunesse africaine d'avoir relevé les défis de cette jeunesse qui est en train de se battre afin que les choses, la stabilité soient en Afrique. Ça a été une grande recette pour nous. Aujourd'hui, la réunion a été tenue au Zimbabwe par le POF. Le tour sera maintenant au Congo Brazzaville, ce qui est annoncé officiellement. C'est une grande joie pour nous d'avoir représenté l'Afrique centrale et d'être élu comme président de l'Afrique centrale au niveau de la Fédération mondiale. Aujourd'hui, la Fédération mondiale m'a fait confiance. C'est un honneur pour nous, mon pays, et c'est un honneur pour le Congo. Il est question pour nous de développer des questions de fond. Comment octroyer l'économie congolaise Comment octroyer l'économie du monde Comment octroyer l'économie des peuples africains Voilà les grandes questions de fond qui ont été développées au niveau de la Fédération mondiale. La révolution ne doit pas se passer seulement verbal, mais cela doit se poser également par des actes. Quels sont nos actes que nous devons poser au niveau au niveau mondial, au niveau africain, afin que nous soyons également respectés comme des autres Donc. Et c'est un honneur pour nous, le peuple congolais. Nous avons bénéficié de la confiance de la Fédération mondiale, de la LID, de, 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 de la Fédération mondiale, afin d'organiser ce sommet qui sera organisé au mois d'octobre. C'est très important pour nous. Nous sommes ravis. La Fédération mondiale a été créée depuis 1954. L'Afrique centrale n'a jamais bénéficié de ce genre d'opportunité. Cette opportunité est arrivée pour les peuples africains, pour l'Afrique centrale. C'est un honneur pour nous. Nous devons s'organiser efficacement afin que l'activité soit une grande activité et que ce soit une grande réussite pour la jeunesse africaine. Merci. Uh, my name is Sivambo Hermine. I'm from Swapo Party Youth League, a central committee member of the Swapo Party Youth League. I came to this summit and I have learned more about this summit. So my view here is I'm encouraging the young leaders of 
African, especially the women, we have to come and stand up together so that we can work together. Young people in Africa, really we don't have land. So I'm urging my fellow young uh, women so that we can fight, so that we can have our own land, to have our own farms and to have our own houses where our children will be proud of it. So that's my view. Viva Swapo Party Youth League Viva, Viva ZANU PF Viva, Viva the Leadership of Africa Viva, Viva of the Viva, Pamberi Comrade Idimu Nangwagwa Pamberi. My name is Benin Ahmed, I'm the Deputy Secretary General for the Pan African Youth Union and I'm from the Republic of Ghana. We are in Harare for the Africa Summit, the Wubdi Africa Summit, and so far it's been very instructive. Instructive in the sense that we discussed a lot of issues. And what is intriguing is the discussion on economic empowerment of young people. I believe that as a continent we can only consolidate our socio-economic progress and development if young people are integrated in the resource mobilization and harnessing process. And I believe that young Africans must be properly empowered economically to be able to represent the Pan-African ideals. I am confident that these discussions that we had here will continue. I'm confident that the young African political leaders and young leaders on the continent will take economic empowerment very seriously because that is the only way to go. If you have an Africa that has got 63% of its total population being young people and out of the overall population, 70% of the unemployed young people on the continent are young people. It tells you that this continent has no future. This continent can only have a future when young people are empowered, when young people are involved in the economic processes of the continent. And we can only realize the AU Agenda 2063 as a continent if young people are economically empowered. The, the second thing that I, I, I would want to focus on is in a manner in which we allow foreign interventions in our respective countries. If you look in recent times, it's been China, India and the West taking full control of our productive resources, our mines, our uh, supermarkets, our retail sector is being taken over. While the majority of young people die in the seas crossing over to Europe, these are the issues that we need to address as young people. And I believe that our continent and our leaders must begin to take these things very seriously. I think that the security, the sustainability and the political stability of this continent is anchored on an empowered youth, a youth that are welfare driven and a youth that are involved in the processes that leads to economic progress and empowerment. Thank you.